Hi all, I was playing around with an AI and got it to generate this ridiculous house. Uh, I wrote in Federation style home and this is what it came up with. Obviously it doesn't look anything like a Federation style home, but let's give it our best shot. So I've had a, quite a uh, long look at the image and it's sort of a little bit hard to tell the shape. If you look really closely at it, it's actually not, uh, it doesn't actually make sense. It's not totally um, correct in terms of perspective and, and how it's actually shaped, but we'll do our best. So I, I sort of think that it looks like it's got a, a porch on the front and on the side, a sort of veranda on the side as well. So um, we've put those on. None of the columns are quite as chunky as the ones that are in that image, but um, we'll give these ones a go. So it looks like it sort of juts out to the side. Um, and I guess because there's no stairs at the front, we can imagine that the stairs are sort of going down the back there. Um, so that you could sort of imagine that if you had the driveway next to it, you would be coming um, up from the driveway back towards the road. Um, I've just used the little fence there to put in some spandrels. Um, it looks like the, there's spandrels in the picture. And we've got this this roof trim uh, to give it that big chunky roof trim on there. I think the this is the weirdest part. It's got these sort of platforms on the roof, almost as though there's like stairs on top of the roof there, which of course looks a bit ridiculous. Um, there seems to be three layers in the image, but that's a little bit hard to do with the scale in The Sims, so I just left it at two. Um, the roof, I uh, sort of used a few pieces to try to get that shape. I wanted to have that funny curved shape that it's got at the bottom and, and opposite at the top. So I've got these uh, different roof pieces. Um, I had to sort of make the top one a little bit round and the bottom one a little bit uh, concave. We've put some more columns around the side. I sort of had to use a little bit of imagination with how I think the side uh, would look because of course the image is not totally complete. Um, it's It's just that front view, um, I sort of could see that there was some kind of uh, balcony looking, not balcony, um, some kind of porch looking thing. And it looked to me like there's a sort of a red window there. Um, so I've, I've got all of that in it. And I've just, uh, it looks like there's a dormer at the top on the roof. So I've put that in afterwards as well. Um, I chose these doors because I think it's probably the closest to what I can see in the image. There's a few really odd things about the image, like uh, it's a little bit hard to tell which one's the front door and where the front door is. And the uh, the roof obviously is very weird and the stair thing on the roof is very weird. There's also what to me reminds me of like a, a tree clipping through the walls as you if you'd placed a tree behind the... Um, behind the roof and it was clipping through uh, or it could be like a hanging plant and we do have a hanging plant that looks a little bit like that um, from the jungle um, pack so I ended up putting that hanging plant up there um, just got all these black window frames which is fine that's sort of the closest we can get up the top obviously they're a bit warped but um, that's that is what it is I'm just noticing now that the roof actually extends out a fair bit more than I sort of did at the front there. Um, you could probably uh, pull that that front bit forward a bit more um, to make it match the, the image more if you really wanted to do that. I've just built in the middle of the desert because it's a lot that I had free. I'm, you know, not really choosing this location for any other reason than that. It would probably go better in terms of the, the pictures and the trees that it looks like it has in uh, somewhere else, you know, probably in Newcrest or um, possibly um, uh, the starter, main starter world, first starter world. Um, I forgot what it's called. Anyway, uh, this is the dormer going in there now. Um, it kind of needs to be a little bit shorter than that. But again, you can't really do a lot about the scale in The Sims. And if you've got one level at and that's already on low height and you know you can't put two things on the same level at different heights so that's the best i can do but it is coming together 
I think it really looks like the house, the, the reddest tile that I could get. So it's not quite as red as um, what is there, but it's pretty close. Um, it it really, to me, is creating that same kind of idea, at least the, the kind of um, vibes that the place is giving off. Uh, I did furnish it in the end, and then I put it up in the gallery. So if you're playing The Sims and you'd like to download it, um, feel free. Uh, I don't know why you would want it, but it's a little bit quirky. Maybe you like it. Um, I'm sort of a little bit attached to it in the sense that it's sort of an artistic kind of weird abstract thing, which is a bit fun. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. Depends how you play. You might get um, annoyed at it because you have to kind of turn the corner to go in the entrance and uh, it, it probably isn't the most practical house to live in. It's got like a little uh, single bed room up the top um, and... Yeah, there's some weird things about it. Like the the uh, columns, there's two columns um, on the right-hand side there. There's one sort of at the front in a weird spot where it doesn't look like it was. I turned around so it was facing the front of the lot, even though the lighting's not really very good. But the lighting's not great on the other side either. Um, but, of course, the gallery picture needs to be the front of the house. And here's that little plant I was talking about sort of sticking in the window. I think that actually looks quite... Um, accurate to the picture, um, even though it's a super weird thing to do. I couldn't find really a good um, bush that is that is right. I think it's kind of closer to the scruffy ones, but it's a bit rounder. A bit rounder, and maybe there's a couple of flowers on, on a couple of them. Um, so my, just my alarm going off in the background there. There was also a funny little kind of brown thing, which I don't know, could have represented a plant or could be anything, but I sort of thought it reminded me of the little snail sculpture. So I put the little snail sculpture in there and then it looked like there was some kind of um, large leaf uh, thing sticking up there, but I didn't really have anything like that. There might be something in another pack, but I don't have anything like that. So I put um, just a little bit of grass behind it, which I think is fine. Um, these two bushes at the front are a little bit weird, but I guess they're kind of like, you could kind of have your, them like a part of your fence or your, that's your entryway area that kind of marks the edge of your property or, you know, you have your mailbox there or something. I don't know. It's just, um, what, what they had in the picture. So that was what I did. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit weird. It took me a while to find the snail in here. But here it is. I just size it down a couple of times. Um, and that's the other one. Uh, I had to have a f quite a few looks at the picture um, while I was creating this because it, it was quite challenging. It's, it's a pretty weird thing. I spent a lot of time staring at it and trying to figure out exactly what I was looking at. Um, the perspective is really the hardest thing. It's, cause it's all flat. There's no real perspective there. It's sort of looks like it makes sense and then you look closer and it just really doesn't um aside from the little clippy bits that obviously don't make sense but that's the same with a lot of these um ai images you know they they sort of look normal from a distance <laughs> then you look close and you got the weird things sticking out of the roof and you know this, i don't know what the red bit bit was at the front that sort of strange sculptural thing maybe it's from a mailbox maybe it's i really don't know but it's a fun tool to play around with. I'll, I'll put, put it in the description, the one that I used. Um, it, I typed in a number of things that were quite hilarious. I tried uh, a collection of figurines and it gave me a really weird abstract thing with like strange um, humanoid figures that didn't have proper features and they were kind of a little bit warped and it was a little bit weird. But one that I did that worked really well, I actually asked it to create an Australian animal and it totally did. Like it just created an animal that I think looks exactly like an animal you might find in Australia. I mean, it has all of the parts that you would see on various Australian animals. It's kind of fairy penguin colored. It's got the pointy nose of an Australian animal. It's got like the, its front legs look kind of emu-like. It's uh, got big sort of 
big floppy ears. It's got like big hind legs. It it really looks like an Australian animal. It's quite impressed actually by that. And its eyes are normal, which is good because um, a lot of the time when you make AI images, um, the eyes for some reason look really weird. Or maybe everything looks, looks weird and the eyes are just something that is particularly is um, particularly noticeable because we are, um, I, don't, I don't know, we communicate with our eyes so much more than we realize, I think. So this is the bedroom upstairs, sort of went with a yellow theme. I put some stuff in the hallway just to sort of make it a little bit less bare. Um, just a couple of plants really in a table. Um, downstairs, we've got the kitchen, which I put under the stairs here. Sorry, the not the kitchen, the um, bathroom under the stairs here. And then I was originally thinking of the kitchen, but then I put the bathroom under there. And I've got a bedroom next to that. Um, and then in front of the bathroom, we have the kitchen. And then we we put the dining and lounge in front of the bedroom. So that's the master suite um, downstairs and the sort of maybe a teen's bedroom upstairs. I've put some posters on the wall. The bathroom's very blue and teal, which is maybe a little bit quirky, but I don't know. I thought it was kind of fun. Um, I covered up, I put a curtain on the window so that, you know, people are not looking at you in the bath. I thought it was probably um, the thing to do. I, it doesn't really matter, but you know, in the game, but in real life, you would probably want something covering that window because there is a street outside there. Um, put this little hutch in there, um, which works quite well. Uh, almost forgot the mirror, but I did get one in there. I always put the soap and the toothbrush holder. Um, again, Sims don't don't use them, but you just have to. It's like the toilet roll. You've got to put the toilet roll, um, which I'm pretty sure I also did. Um, I haven't showed every single bit of this. I've cut some of it out just because otherwise it would be too long. But um, it's it's all sort of in there really. And if you want to look at it more closely, you can you can download it or um, have a look at the gallery pictures online. I left one of I covered one of the windows and I left the other one sort of open, um, sort of a nice place to look out of and. I don't know, an interesting feature in a kitchen to have like a floor length window that you are, can look out of from the kitchen. Um, definitely not usual, but I, don't, I thought it sort of looked okay. Um, the cupboards don't really uh, fit perfectly. The, the larger one doesn't fit above the fridge, but the smaller one's sort of too small. Um, so you have to kind of lift them up a little bit, which you can do, so that's fine. But um, the... Uh, also, the range hood often ends up in the cabinetry. And because realistically, you would put a range hood through the cabinetry and you would have, you know, the kind of motor or whatever inside one of, one of your cabinets and that would be fine. So um, sometimes what I do, even if it's one of those ones that goes up to the roof, is I'll just put move objects on and put the cabinetry over it anyway, um, which I think is quite reasonable. And I put a TV over the, to the top of the window which is a bit weird and a bit dumb, but that's the space that I had left for it. And I don't know if that's what you had left, you might, you might do that. <laughs> I mean, maybe you wouldn't, maybe you'd arrange it a different way, but that's what I did. Um, so there's the house. I've shifted the tree around a little bit. It's got to sort of stay on the block, but be far enough away from the building that it's not kind of cutting in. Um, none of the lighting is um, amazing, but it sort of looks fine. I'm just trying to decide which one to put on the gallery. Um, I put it on the gallery as AI monstrosity because it's pretty monstrous. Um, if you'd like to download it, my name on the gallery is Chaflosion, which is spelled C-H-A-R-P-H-L-O-S-I-O-N. And I'll write that in the descri description down below as well. So I hope you enjoyed um, watching this video or just listening to me talk. I know I like to have people talking in the background sometimes. I'll probably do a few more of these in the future because it was quite a lot of fun to try to copy something that doesn't exist and is a bit ridiculous. If there's anything you'd like to see or if you have any comments, please let me know down below. And check out James Turner on YouTube who is a content creator who I got the idea for the AI generated house from. Uh, he's done a couple of those at least. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Bye.